All right, today's lesson is going to be another quickie. Today we're going to go ahead and create the enemy spawners. So I'm going to go ahead and just create an empty. Uh, we'll assign it to, what am I not using? I'm not using pink. And I'm just going to call it enemy spawner. Uh, we are going to need a spawn point for the player later on too, but for now, we're going to work on the enemy ones. And we need a component. So we'll go ahead, we'll create that. Which I will call enemy spawner. And we'll open this up. And like always, let's get rid of everything. Not going to need an update in this one. And I'm going to go ahead and create a serialized field of game objects. Oh, we'll just use one. We only have one enemy. If you have multiple ones, maybe later on I'll come through and make multiple ones. Uh, for now, I just only have one enemy. And of course, everyone knows how to do an array and random dot range, right? Anyway, I'm going to call this enemy prefab. Then the first method. First method I'm going to look at, I'm just going to call it spawn enemy. And this simply is just going to instantiate. And we're just going to instantiate an enemy prefab. And I'm thinking if we actually need to do anything else, well, we need to give it a position. I want it to spawn at the position that we have for the spawner. I'll go ahead and give it a quaternion.identity as the rotation. And I'm deciding on whether or not do I need to have this be a child of the spawner. It'd be kind of nice that way there we know what spawner it came from. Uh, where I'm not going to have too many in my hierarchy to begin with. So it's not like having a bunch of them is going to clutter it up. So I think I'm, I'm going to have it not be a child. So I'm just going to go ahead and end it there. I don't need to adjust any properties on the ship right now. So I don't need to save it off and as, as a game object or anything. I might need to later on. We'll see. And one thing that I should be thinking about in the future is how am I going to control these spawns? Am I just going to have like a master script that uh, in the inspector has a place for me to assign these and it controls the spawning and the, the, the stop spawning of the enemies? Or do I want to go ahead and put some sort of event system into the game where I can just shout out, you know, start spawning and all the spawn points start spawning. And maybe when the game ends, I yell, you know, stop spawning and everything else stops spawning. Let me know down below in the comments. One way is easier. I don't think we've done a video on events yet. So we could start off with something simple like C sharp events. We have covered them in class. So for the students in class watching, you can use either or. But like I said, just let me know down in the comments which one you would like to see. And when we get to that point, we'll switch over. All right, so anyway, we still need a way to start and stop. So I'm gonna say stop spawning. And I'm just gonna cancel the invokes all the invokes on this game object or in this component, sorry. And then for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this and start. Well, I know I'm gonna to wanna to start spawning as well. So we'll just go ahead, we'll just do the, do that part now. And in here, we're just gonna say invoke, invoke repeating the method we want, which is spawn enemy. How often? Well, let's put that up here. Serialize field, float, and I'm just gonna call it spawn timer. And I don't know, five seconds sounds good to, to spawn. A lot of it's really just gonna depend on how many of these you have around. So do I want this to spawn immediately or do I wanna wait a certain amount of time? I want it to wait a certain amount of time and I want it to be that spawn timer. So it's not gonna spawn the first enemy for five seconds, but after that, I'm gonna spawn a new one every five seconds after that. So I'll get one on five seconds, 10 seconds, and I like that. Now to start this up, I'm going to go ahead and just call it through start. Like I said, later on, we can use an event system, in which case we'll have to come in and add a enable and disable, but start makes it easy. And I am just going to call start spawning. And I think that's actually all we need. Now we are going to have a problem when we start spawning here and that it's going to go out and look for the player. And when it spawns in, if it can't find the player, it's going to have an error. Actually, we have it directly assigned. If I go ahead and just take a look at my prefabs here. Uh, enemy, yeah, so we have it assigned in the target and we can't drag that into a prefab. So we will have to go ahead and make some changes to these scripts, but let me just check out these ones here. So float, float, Did I, I made them float. Oh, this is supposed to be in quotes. There we go, we'll jump back in. Make sure it changes, there we go. So if we go ahead and I'm gonna make my game manager now. Well, no, we'll just go ahead. Just We got the 
enemy spawner. Let's just go ahead and put the script on it. And I have it in my prefabs. I'm not sure why, but I'm going to overwrite whatever it is. There we go. And we need an enemy to spawn. And I'm just going to put it at 000 for now. And we'll zoom in on it. Oh, 000 is for the wall. Let's just go ahead. We'll just move that wall out of the way now. We don't need it. Great. And we'll just watch the enemy spawner. Hit play. It'll spawn one. But like I said, when it comes in, it's not going to know where the thing it's supposed to follow is. And we start getting errors. So that happens in two of the scripts. So let's go ahead and we'll fix that in those scripts. So we'll do enemy movement first. We have the target up here. So I'm going to go and create a method. We probably should actually create a component for this because uh, you're just going to be writing the exact same code in each method. But that's something we can look at at the end when we start cleaning a bunch of stuff up. Now I just want void find target. And I don't like the way it's over at the side like this. Why are we doing that? Um, looks like I'm missing my parenthesis here. There we go. I accidentally erased it apparently. So let's go ahead, just do some cleanup. There we go. So what we're going to say is if target is equal to null, then target is equal to game object, capital G. Remember, we're going out looking for a game object. Small g refers to the game object that this component is going to be attached to. But we want to go out and find a game object with a tag. Not game objects. We don't want to return an array. We just want to return the single one. There should only ever be one. So find game object with tag. That tag we're looking for is player. And target stores a transform, right? So let's go ahead and try to get the transform as well. We might have to break that up into two steps. We'll see. Then I'm just going to do one more quick check. If after that the target still equals null, I'm going to go ahead and return a bool. I'm going to return false. So we do not have a target. Else we're going to return true. And then I can just come up into update and say if find target, and actually we're looking at false. If we don't have a target, return. So we don't need to do anything as far as like the pathfinding goes or the moving because we know we need a target. So if we don't find a target, just get out of here. There's no point in finishing the rest of this frame. I'll just quickly check that. So that should take care of it for the movement. We're probably still going to need it on the attack script. So let's go ahead. We'll start this up. And we should only be getting it on the attack script now. So we got to regenerate. That happens every two seconds. There we go. If we take a look, he's now moving because he can find us from when he spawned in. But the attack script is still not working. So both of these are from attack. Let's just go ahead, jump into attack and fix that. So I'm just going to copy this whole method over into enemy attack. We'll come down to the bottom. To find target. Come up to update and do the exact same thing. Actually, let's just copy paste. We know it works. Get down them dang typos. Now, I guess if you want to go ahead and do a little bit of homework, go ahead and try to make this into a component so we can just go ahead and just check that component. Shouldn't be that hard, but I think it's a good exercise at this point. We're on our week three game. I think it's a good exercise to go out and try. And all right, colors have changed. So we'll go ahead, we'll jump back in. I'm going to go ahead, hit clear. We do have an error here. And I'm not sure how that got there. I, I blame the gremlins. We'll go ahead, let that recompile. Now when they spawn in, they should be able to not only find us to fly around with us, but also shoot us. And there we go, we got shot. So great, now we can spawn our guys in. Uh, we got one at 000. Let's go ahead and make a few of these. I'm just going to duplicate it. Oh, let's put this one at 100, 100, 100. Let's put this one at negative 100. Well, let's do zero and negative 100. There we go. So if we zoom out a bit, we should have three of these things. There we go. We got three spawn points. And if we start it up, I believe I had them not being child. So we should see three enemies spawn in at five seconds. 
Now, of course, you, there we go. You could go ahead. Oh, let's actually just start flying around a bit. Well, let's try to fly around a bit. And we're obviously going to have to shorten the range of the shots. I can't even control it. But yeah, we're going to have to shorten their range on which they can shoot us from. As well as, oh my God, it's going to get crazy. But anyway, yeah, we're going to have to change the, um, the range at which they can shoot us at. And probably their shot duration as well. Not the shot duration, but um, the time in between shots. So yeah, they'll also, they should technically try to avoid each other as well. There's going to be a little bit of colliding when you just get this many going. But man, that looks pretty cool. And of course, I, I just, it's impossible for me to fly. It's just, I, I'm getting bounced around way too much. But anyway, there we go. So today we got spawn points going so we can spawn multiple enemies at once. We've gone ahead and fixed up the enemies so that when they spawn in, they can go ahead and still be able to find and track stuff. Uh, one thing we are going to need that for as well is the follow cam. When a player dies, uh, it's not going to be able to follow our player around. So we're going to go ahead and have to add that code there as well. Just so we don't get a bunch of errors when we destroy the player. And of course, when we spawn the player back in, we want it to be able to go find that. But anyway, thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You'd be a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears. <laughs>